Good morning. Welcome back. Very exciting day. Very exciting day because the Lord has given me such encouragement today. Encouragement by giving me insight to His mercy. Our God is so merciful. Regardless of the way we react, He is merciful toward His children. So I just entitled this episode or this message, Unbelievable Mercy. And you'll see why. I know that we know the mercies of God, that He has mercy on our life to, to save us from our sins. Amazing. And, and thank you, Lord Jesus. But He has mercies in other ways. And He is merciful with wayward children. He often will do for us what we should be doing for ourselves. And uh, that is not works, once again, that I'm trying to allude to. I'm talking about the fact that there are certain things He requires of us to do. One is we need to seek His will. If we seek His will and seek His face, He will give us the desires of our hearts. Now, often as a small green Christian, we are, um, you're not giving me the desire of my heart. I'm getting frustrated. All your promises are not being brought to fruition. I don't know if I can trust anymore that you're going to do this. I have no confidence as we've spoken before. Let me show you what happened today and what God has shown me uh, in my quiet time. Absolutely phenomenal. I started in Psalms, as I've told you I normally do. And I'm at the end of Psalms 119 now. Psalms 119 is the longest psalm, as we know, in, in the book. And I'm at the end, I'm at the section of, that, the, the last section of Psalms, sorry. T-A-W, Tao, Tor, I don't know how you pronounce it. I don't know how they would pronounce it in Hebrew, but nevertheless, here we go. It's, it's Psalm 119, 169 to 176. Let's read it quickly. May my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. May my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. May my lips overflow with praise, for you teach me your decrees. May my tongue sing of your word, for all your commands are righteous. May your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let me live that I may praise you and may your law sustain me. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. There is so much in there that we as smoldering Christians should be considering. There is so much in there. And the Father just started to show me some beautiful things. The first thing that I want us to look at is, May my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. This is the word of God. You will never have understanding unless you go to the word of God, unless you start studying the word, regardless of how you feel. Trust what you know. One of the, the greatest women of faith that I'm aware of is my mom. She's a lady in her 70s and I revere her as a Christian mentor for me. And she has taught me one thing in life. I don't know if I've said it before in one of the episodes, but I'll say it again because it's worth hearing. And, and this has stayed with me, and it's amazing. She always says, never trust what you think you know. Only trust that which you know. Now, I would like to put before you that as a Christian of many years, we still only think we know the Word. I'm sorry, you, you will study the Word your entire life and you will never completely know it. And in order to believe it, you need to know it. And in order to know it, you need to be in it every single day. So what does he say? He says, "My cry, may my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. So two things are important there. One, we want understanding according to the word. Forgive me his word. But where does our cry come before him? While we busy in his word. He doesn't mind us crying before Him. He doesn't mind us, for want of a better phrase, begging Him. He does, we don't need to beg. But He knows it's human nature. He knows where you are in your situation. He knows. And I know that's a frustration for us. because we, we, I know that God knows, but if He knows, why isn't He doing anything? Let's move forward. Let's, let's see what happens. May my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promises. So by the way, stop feeling guilty that you want God's promises to be, to deliver you. 
you want God's promises to reach fruition. It makes sense. And the Bible says, according to that, that I may want it. I may desire it. Deliver me according to your promise. So I see the promises of God and I may want them to be brought to fruition. There's nothing wrong with wanting them to be brought to fruition. But the first part is, may my supplication come before you. Have you given up supplication? Have you given up asking God? Have you given up praying? Something very important there. May my lips overflow with praise for you teach me your decrees. May my tongue sing of your word for all your commands are righteous. What I say and how I react is a witness to the world. And he's saying, may my lips overflow with praise for you teach me your decrees. May my tongue sing of your word for all your commands are righteous. May I let the world know that regardless of the fact that my cry has become before the Lord for whatever reason, I will still sing the praises to his glorious holy name. My lips will overflow with praise. 173, may your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. Huh. Why must God's hand be ready to help us? Why must his hand be ready to help us? Because we have chosen his precepts. We have chosen his precepts. Now the interesting thing about that is if we have a look again, as I normally do in my Oxford English Dictionary here, to, to find the word precept. The precept is rule for action or conduct, exhortation. That's the meaning of the word precept. So what does the word rule then mean? According to the Oxford English, English Dictionary, the word rule is principle to which action conforms or should conform. Dominant custom. Canon. Test. Standard. Normal state of things. So God's precepts should be the normal state of things. What are the normal state of things? The normal state of things are found in His Word. The normal state of things are found here. We need to be in His Word so that we can learn His precepts. And when we know the normal state of things, we will do what is required in accordance with the normal state of things. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Delight yourselves. Delight yourselves in the Lord. The law is His delight, according to the psalmist. Are we delighting ourselves in the Lord? Are we delighting ourselves in his law? Yes, I know we're no longer under law, but let's look at this context right now. The context of God's law is delighting in him and what he requires. Are we doing so? Very exciting. Look at this. Just hang on. It's getting better. You'll see. Let me live that I may praise you and may your law sustain me. Why do I want God's help? I want God's help so that I may live. I may get out of my scenario and get out of everything that is coming my way that is causing so much fear. Why? Let me live that I may praise you. And you go, but Terrence, I will praise him when everything goes right. Yeah, I'm sure you will. And so will I. And we will mean it. Because we are smoldering, not dead. We love God. But look what he admits here. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant. For I have not forgotten your commands. I have strayed like a lost sheep. There's the admission. Have you admitted that yet? Have you admitted that you've strayed like a lost sheep? My friends, look at the amazing mercy of God. The amazing mercy of God is this. We may ask Him, if we're not seeking Him the way we should seek Him, look what we're allowed to ask according to God's word. Seek your servant. For I have not forgotten your commands. Isn't that us? Isn't that a smoldering Christian? We know we've strayed, but we've not forgotten his commands. We're still smoldering. The flame of faith is extinguished, but we're still smoldering. We have not forgotten his commands. Interesting here. Will God seek us? Well, according to Jesus, he will. Let's have a look here. Luke chapter 15. Let's see what it says. In Luke chapter 15... It's the parable of the lost sheep. 
Suppose one of you have a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the, all, in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? That's Luke chapter 15 verse 4. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Well, I've got news for you, you do need to repent. If you're thinking, but I'm not lost, I'm, I'm not somebody who doesn't believe in Jesus, I don't need to repent. Yes, you do. You have strayed. You've already admitted it. And I've asked you if you've admitted it, if we go back to, back to Psalms. I have strayed like a lost sheep. This psalmist is not saying that he doesn't believe in God ever and that he's one of the lost people who don't know Jesus at all or care to. This is someone who knew God's laws. The person who wrote the psalm knew God's laws, but he admits that he has strayed like a lost sheep. Have you admitted that today? What happens when you admit it? How do you admit it? What do you need to admit? Well, let's look at something interesting God has shown me in His mercy. First of all, look how merciful He's been. Brothers and sisters, He's willing to seek you. If you are not seeking Him, He's willing to seek you to go look for you. If you truly want to be found by God, you will be found by Him. Why? Because as, he, as you draw near to Him, He'll draw near to you. As you desire to want to get closer to God, He will seek you and find you. He knows where you are anyway. But He still says that we're allowed to ask God to seek us because we're too weak. We don't have the, the required endurance and we are not in God's Word and we're not praying. Now, I have strayed like a lost sheep Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. Well, as a Christian, what are God's commands? There are several corporate, corporate commands, but let's consider the commands that Jesus gave us. So if I consider the commands that Jesus gave us, I have to go to John fifteen twelve. It says this, My command is this, Love each other, as I have loved you. <laughs> That's God's command. Love each other as I have loved you. But I do do that. I love my neighbors as Jesus loves me. Do you? Are you certain? Because I had to really scratch deep and dig deep to find out if I am doing that. What is Jesus' way of loving us? And something the Holy Spirit brought to for this specific message today was this, and, and it was amazing. So I want to go and see how Jesus has loved us. Well, I had to do that by going back to the Old Testament, and I had to look at the following verse. In Deuteronomy 31.6, he says the following, Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with them. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. And there's the word. There's the word that is the anchor to the message today for all of us. What does the word forsake mean? Let's go back to the dictionary and just make sure we understand this. The word forsake in the Oxford English Dictionary is give up. Renounce, desert, abandon. So how has God loved us? How has Jesus loved us? He says, He will never leave you, nor forsake you. Once again, it's read the whole verse. That's chapter 31 of Deuteronomy, verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's not going to forsake you. But have we forsaken him? Let's see if Jesus confirmed that that is the way he loves us. 
Well, if we go to Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18, he says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He will never leave us. And thus never forsake us. My dear brothers and sisters, let's not forsake Him. Give up on Him. Abandon our faith in Him. Let's continue to love Him the way He loves us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Now, God says, love one another as I have loved you. And you might say, but Terence, that verse says, I must not forsake other people. Well, perhaps we should not forsake not only other people. Maybe we should not forsake our own diligence toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's not forsake our faith in Jesus. Let's not forsake our faith in his promises because he will never leave us nor forsake us. That's how he has loved us. Love one another as I have loved you. That's his commands to us. And let's go back to what the psalmist says then. Right at the back of Psalm 119, he says, I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. You haven't forgotten God's commands either. I know you haven't. Let's love God. Let's not forget His commands. And Jesus' commands were love one another as I have loved you. How has He loved us? He has loved us by never leaving us nor forsaking us. And moreover that He searches for us. He seeks us. Can we hold on to His promises? Yes. If we admit that we have strayed, let him seek you. Ask him to seek you. You see, he will not seek you unless that is what you will. He will never go against your will. Let our will be this. That our will is whatever he wills. Our will is whatever he wills. God's mercy is so rich. God's mercy is so loving. And if you're battling to seek him, ask him to seek you. Mean it. And he will. And when he finds you, he will rejoice. Admit that you have strayed. Admit that you are straying. Find understanding in his word. And then love one another as he has loved us. And understand how he loves us. He will never forsake us. In other words, he'll never give up. He'll never abandon us. You can hold on to Him. Hold on to the fact that that's how He loves you. He will never leave you, never give up on you, never abandon you. Don't ever give up on Him. Don't ever abandon your praise of Him. Don't forsake the flame of faith in Jesus. Do not give up on Jesus. Please don't do that. Because he hasn't and will never give up on you. The mercy of God is rich. So rich that even in our smoldering state of aggression and anger and frustration and fear, he will seek you if you ask him to. He will fan the smoldering wick into flame. Be excited about that. Get into his word to find understanding. Don't forsake praying to him. Don't forsake reading his word. Because I promise you, that is the only true comfort that you will be given by the Holy Spirit. Is from his word. Go and pray to Jesus. Ask him to forgive you for your reactions. Ask him to forgive you for the fact that that you rail against him. Ask him to seek you if you are battling to seek him. And he will find you. Stay in his word. 
I hope this has been encouraging. It's been encouraging to me. I've got such a smile on my face this morning on such a beautiful morning. Hold on to that. May God bless you. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that we can ask you to seek us out. I thank you that when we stray as sheep, you can come and seek us out. I thank you that you rejoice when you find us. I thank you that you will never forsake us. You never give up on us. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that your mercy extends beyond our reactions, whether they be positive or negative. I pray that you will fan our flame into brightness, that we will burn for you, Lord Jesus, and that we will remember that our will should be whatever your will for us is, and that that is what we will truly ask for. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the mercy you always rain down upon us. In the name of Jesus, I pray to you, the Holy Father, led by the Spirit. Amen. Hold on to it today, and I'll see you next time. God bless you. Goodbye.